appreciate the opportunity. Working? Yes? Okay. Too loud? Not too loud? <clears throat> Happy New Year. We, uh, we mark this time as a society, but I've been thinking over the last several weeks that as 2016 was winding down, that there's a perspective that you and I need to have that we need to be careful we don't ignore. I don't think that's something we would do intentionally, but we forget that there's a Christian perspective to newness that we really need to be incorporating in our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. Paul is kind of giving us that insight here in Philippians chapter 3 that Stan read for us just a few moments ago. I haven't gotten there, Paul says. So I keep going there, keep going in that direction. And I do that because of Christ. Christ laid hold of me, therefore, I'm trying to lay hold of that newness that I have in Him. And so what do I do? I press on. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. We have a lot of phrases in our world that come and phrases that go. I can remember, I'm old enough to remember when the word cool was cool. A while back I was visiting with a young man and as we were talking, we were talking about something that was going to happen, something that was going to be accomplished. And he said, right on. That kind of stuck in my mind, right on. The Christian life is a process in which we ought to be involved in something in which we're saying, right on. And that's what Paul is talking about here. I would like to read four passages of Scripture, and in those four passages of Scripture, I want you to concentrate upon this idea of pressing on to the goal because there is newness. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death. Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. Romans chapter 6, verse 3 and verse 4. Going back to Jeremiah and Lamentations chapter 3. The Lord's loving kindnesses indeed never cease, for His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I have hope in Him. And then Paul to the Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, the new things have come. And then in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 13. But according to his promise, we are looking for new heavens and a new earth in which 
righteousness dwells. May we be blessed by the reading of God's holy word. Our lesson really is a very simple one, but yet I think it is one that has tremendous insight and impact to us getting 2017 going in the right direction and continuing in the right direction. It is how do we make things right on? How do we keep things going in the direction that God wants us to keep those things going? And in these four passages we've read, there are four insights that I think it is important for us to stop and to consider, important for us to stop and think about and to allow to work within our lives. Number one, we need to remember every single day the salvation which we have in Christ Jesus. As we wrote from Romans chapter 6, it's, it's being buried with Him through baptism. It's being raised to walk with Him in newness of life. There is a whole different perspective for the person who has the blood of Jesus covering him from all of his sins and all of his unrighteousness. We get off track when we forget that we have that covenant relationship with Christ. We get off track when we forget that we're not walking in the salvation which God has blessed us with. I wish we could go through all of the book of 1 Peter because Peter spends a lot of time talking about this remembrance of our salvation. Almost everything that he says there has something to do, connection to be. In chapter 1, verse 18, he says, Know that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold from your feudal way of life inherited from your forefathers, but you were redeemed with precious blood as of a lamb unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. I'm undone, you're undone, we're all undone. All have sinned, all fall short. All of us struggle on a day-to-day -day basis. The tempter is very real. The problems are very real. But for the, first, for the person who remembers that he has been redeemed by the blood of Christ, the precious blood, the unblemished blood, the spotless blood, that gives him a power over life that most of the world just simply don't have. That brings the question to mind, do you have the salvation which is in Christ? You see, it's very easy to make an assumption, but when we begin to check God's Word, we begin to look at the Scriptures, we begin to see that He's very bold, very specific to us about that covenant relationship that we can have. We go back to Acts chapter 2 and and you find Peter beginning to preach that marvelous sermon, which he talks about this Jesus whom they had crucified, but that God had made both Lord and Christ. The people were cut to the heart, and they asked, men and brethren, what shall we do? How, how can we handle this situation? We, we've killed the Son of God. And he tells them to repent and to be immersed, every one of them, in the name of Jesus, for the forgiveness of their sins, they would receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And he continued to preach to them concerning saving yourselves from this wicked and perverse generation, this world in which we live. And on that day, 3,000 souls were immersed in Christ. And a few days later, 5,000, and then it began to talk about multitudes. Are you a part of the multitudes? Are you of those who have been buried with Christ in that watery grave and, and you've been raised to walk in newness of life as Romans chapter 6 verse 3 and 4 describes for us? Have you been cleansed by the blood of Christ? 
If you haven't, my friend, there's no reason that today you can't leave this assembly being a part of Christ. You believe with all of your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Are you willing to confess that before men? Are you willing to turn from sin and turn toward God? As Acts 26 and verse 20 describes to us. And become His. The possibility is You've become a Christian. You, you've been buried with Christ. You've been raised to walk in newness of life. But somehow you've just wandered to the right or to the left. You, you've kind of toyed with this idea of Christ ruling in your heart and Christ being the Lord of your life. Maybe today is the day that you need to, to say, I'm going to turn toward God from now on. I'm going to, to give my heart and allegiance to Him and Him only. Because you've wandered away. Maybe you're faithful to Christ. Are you basking in the salvation which is in Christ? The question that came to my mind when I was thinking about this is what empowers us to remember our salvation? What empowers us to walk? as a person who is redeemed by Christ. And that passage in Lamentations came to mind. We sing it in a song. You can remember that newness because of the nature of God's blessings, that they are new every morning. That's why we have that ability to keep on, to go in that direction. Yesterday morning, we woke up, most of us ate breakfast, began to carry out some of the routines of the day. I have the feeling that we weren't hungry, I have the feeling that we weren't cold or we weren't too hot. We could turn the air conditioner or the heater depending on what we needed. We had blessings beyond blessings. Maybe some of us, because of the holiday season, the giving of gifts, our checking account is just a little bit low, but we know before very long there's going to be an infusion, or at least we pray there's going to be an infusion. And we have blessings. I don't see anyone in the audience who isn't dressed and dressed nicely. And somehow you got here. And some of us got here in really nice vehicles, automobiles. Where does all of that come from? It, it comes from God. No wonder Paul would write in the book of Hebrews, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. Why? Because he who promised is faithful. When John talks about God, he talks about the faithfulness of God in 1 John chapter 1. You begin to see that the blessings are there and because God has blessed us, because they're new every morning, we have newness in July and August and October just like we do today. So then the admonition, as we read from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, is that we ought to live in that newness. Live in that newness. Live in the present promises that God has given to us. Paul was writing to the church at Colossae, and as he writes to this group of people, he's thinking about the redemption that they've gone through and, and the process that's happening in their lives. And, and he, here is his words beginning with verse 9. For this reason also, since the day we heard of it, we have not ceased to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding 
so that you will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, to please Him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. We haven't ceased to pray that you'd be filled with knowledge, spiritual wisdom, understanding. That you would walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. In fact, in the book of Colossians, at least two times, maybe three, Paul is going to make this same statement about walking in the Lord. Every day is newness to us when we're walking in the blessings that Christ has given to us. There's power when we do that. But then fourthly, we don't talk about it as much as I think we ought to. And that is our eternal goal. We get so very, very caught up in the here and now and so very, very caught up in what's going on around us that we literally forget that this world really is not our home, as the song says. We forget that Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost so that that could have that covenant relationship with God and could go home with Him and spend eternity with Him. The Gospel of John, Jesus is trying to, to give people into insight to the fact that He is the bread of life. He begins to talk about that in a sermon in John chapter 6 and, and all of a sudden those great quantities of people who have been following after Jesus, they turn and they go away from Jesus. Jesus looks at his disciples, the twelve, and he says, You do not want to go away also, do you? In verse 68, Simon Peter looks at Jesus and says, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have words of eternal life. What in the world are you telling me, Peter? Jesus, you have the words of eternal life? You, you mean there's something more than the here and now? There's something more important than the here and now? There's something that we ought to live for in such a way that we attain that? The answer to that question is yes. I was listening to a sermon of a friend eight or ten years ago, and he started off, I believe in heaven. And I also believe there is a place of eternal punishment. And if you believe in heaven enough and you fear eternal punishment enough, you will live your life differently on a day-to-day -day basis. I've thought about that over the years. What is Jesus trying to give to us? He's, he's trying to give us that freedom that allows us to have eternal life. A hope of being at home with God in heaven. In the last part of Romans chapter 6, he says, But having been freed from sin, you're enslaved to God. You derive your benefit, resulting in sanctification, and the outcome, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. It changes your perspective when you're constantly thinking about your eternal destiny. Where am I going? It allows you to live in that newness that we have every morning, in those blessings that God gives to us, in that salvation that is offered to us freely. No wonder Paul would admonish the young man, Timothy, to fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of eternal life to which you were called. And you made the good confession in the presence 
of many witnesses. Fight the good fight of faith. Why? Because you want to take hold of eternal life. The lesson is yours. The question that I ask as I offer an invitation this morning is, are you living in newness every day? If you haven't come to Christ, you haven't been immersed into Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins, it's a little difficult. But when you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and you're willing to confess your faith in Him and and to be immersed with Him in that watery grave, to be raised to walk in that newness of life, it's new every morning. Why? Because God's blessings are there, new every morning. Are you walking in that newness? Are you walking with a heart totally attuned to being Christ's person here upon this earth? Because you know that there's a great day coming. There is an eternity. And we're living now in preparation to go home and to be with the Father forever. I press on to the mark of the upward call of Christ. That's what Paul tells us. Right on. Right on. If you need to respond to Jesus this morning, we extend the invitation. We give you the opportunity. Would you come while together we stand and while we sing?